So there might be time when you're writing your JavaScript code when you experience an error. And that's fine if it does happen. Sometimes variables don't receive the correct value or the user inputs some data that causes your program to behave differently or you receive a response from a server that isn't expected and the code you've written just isn't able to cope. So whilst that isn't a problem in itself, experiencing an error will actually stop the execution of your JavaScript code. So for example, in the code that you can see on the screen, I've tried to call a function called say hi, which actually isn't defined with a variable name that's not actually defined. And you can see we get the error in the console on the right hand side saying exactly that, but the console.log underneath it doesn't actually run. So JavaScript provides you with a way of testing some of your code to see if it actually produces an error and if it does to actually handle that error gracefully. And we do that in JavaScript using a try catch block. So try and catch are two JavaScript keywords and as you can see, they're followed by some curly braces. So inside the try curly braces, we can actually put in code that we're not sure whether it's going to work or there's a chance that it might generate an error. So as soon as we move our call to our non-existent say hi function within the try block, the actual console.log that was failing to run earlier is displayed okay. And that's because any errors that occur within our try block are passed to the catch and the value of that error is passed to the error variable inside those parentheses. So rather than leaving the catch block empty, we could display a message to the user to let them know that something's actually gone wrong. So this would be useful to let the user know that something isn't quite right, but we'll still let the rest of the JavaScript code continue working. And if you're interested in what's stored inside of the error variable, you can see it contains the notification that the say hi function is not defined, but there's a whole lot of other information in there as well. And that's something called a stack trace. And a stack trace is used to identify at what particular point the error occurred. And it looks a bit confusing and cryptic inside of run.js because there's a lot of other underlying JavaScript that's running in the background. So don't get too frightened at just looking at that output there. Chances are if you're running a small program or running in the browser, the actual stack trace that you get will be a lot more minimal than this. So you'll use a try catch block wherever you think an error may occur, or if you identify an error occurring within your code, you can go back and wrap a try catch block around it to make sure the rest of your code continues working.